Hello, beautiful people. How are you? It's been a minute, yeah? I'm back, bouncing back. <laughs> yes, thank you for your continuous support in this. And um, we have dive in into testimonies here. So today we are going to have a, a testimony from a powerhouse woman. <laughs> Please, fasten your seatbelt because it's going to be hot. <laughs> Yeah, so thank you for those who have already subscribed. Continue subscribing, uh, even uh, sharing and commenting on this uh, channel, as well as uh, those who have not subscribed, please, 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 please hit that button, hit it. Yeah, so help me welcome Kate. Yes. Catherine. Yes. I will address you as Kate. Yes. Yes. Karibu sana. Asante sana. Thank you so much for accepting to be on this channel thank you for having me it's yeah. a pleasure yes. okay so can you introduce yourself uh, yes um, my name is Catherine mm -hmm. Wamoyo Njue Njue is my husband okay uh, born to a man a wonderful man called Geoffrey Kanye mm -hmm. yes uh, born uh, and uh, raised in uh, the hills of Karatina in yeah. Madeira constituency okay a village called Gitunduti all right. Yes, I schooled there. <laughs> Should visit. <laughs> yes, I schooled there, and uh, I went to high school in Muranga, Kahogia Girls, and then uh, yes, I went to the School of Accountancy, Kenya School of Accountancy, mm -hmm. and uh, I finished that. Started working, and uh, here and there, jobs here and there. Until here, I am. Mm -hmm. Yes, I am an author right now. Okay. I am a minister of the gospel. I am. Yes, I am a mom. Wow. Yes, and a wife. Awesome. So uh, I thank God for that. Great, yes. great. So how many years have you been married? <laughs> we are in the 11th year, awesome. right? Yes, uh, we turned the 12th year in November this year. Wow. Yes, many years. <laughs> Of God's grace. Yes. Awesome. Mm -hmm. All right. So um, I know you have been in this journey of waiting mm -hmm. on God for the uh, gift of womb. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Can you tell us how was, how ha how this journey of waiting has been? Okay. Yeah. From uh -huh. the eleventh year. I mean, you are you are turning twelve years. Yes. Yeah. So those that's a long time, eh? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Yeah. It is, and uh, I thank God because mm -hmm. uh, I, He has, uh, you know, given He has given us grace mm -hmm. and also a testimony that we can testify to people. Yes. So I got married quite young, at twenty five, and uh, very young. <laughs> yes, uh, but uh, <laughs> at, at this age, yeah. if someone at twenty five says they are getting married, people are like, "Oh, unenda wapi?" Unenda naraka. Yes. Yes. So for. Uh, for us, uh, we just got married and we knew, you know, uh, when you get married, the, f the first year you just, uh, you know, honeymoon. Mm -hmm. Then the second year now you start uh, producing babies, babies one by one, two, <laughs> three, four, until <laughs> you, you are satisfied. Stop. Yes. <laughs> so we are in our first year, nothing much. I am working. Uh, we were both busy parents, mm -hmm. uh, be busy work, well, work yes. people in work, you mm -hmm. know. Mm -hmm. So nothing much. So in my second year in marriage, I quit my job. Mm -hmm. So once I, after I quit my job, uh, now I was used to a nine to five job or an eight to five, nine, yes, five, five job. Yes. And then we were used to coming home late. Mm -hmm. So no one felt, you know, like there is a void or a space. Mm. So uh, when I quit my job, now the house started becoming so huge. The hours were so many. Mm. I started feeling, ah, uh -uh, we need children now. Because uh, if he's working, he's coming late at night. Yeah. I need, uh, right now, I need uh, something else to do. To keep you busy. Yes, because I was uh, doing uh, business here and there. But I felt, you know, I need something. Mm. So second year. But there was no pressure, yeah. really. No pressure. Mm. Uh, then uh, comes, uh, you know, uh, third year. Mm. Hmm, I'm starting to uh, wonder um, what is uh, going on. You mm -hmm. know, uh, we are not using anything and the children are not forthcoming. 
So I started feeling like, you know, I think there's a problem. There's something that is not mm. uh, working here. Mm. Uh, but uh, I put it at the back of my mind because really there was no much pressure from mm. anyone. Mm. So come the third year passed, well, then come the fourth year. And uh, now people are worried mm. and really are troubled. You guys, mm-hmm. you know, what, what's going on? And uh, of course, now people even are coming to pray for you in the house or everywhere you go. You know, people st- stand you up. Let's pray for this couple there. And, uh, you know, that sometimes for people who are in waiting brings mm. a lot of emotions. Yeah. Because uh, you feel, uh, okay. And the, the, the explanation of, um, you know, I'm waiting mm. on God or sometimes it doesn't come. Mm-hmm. So sometimes you may feel like it's too much when people pray mm. for you specifically. And most of the time people pray for the woman, yeah. not the, the father. Because mm. in the society that we live in, uh, infertility ma- and all those women. things. Yes, mm. it's assumed that mm. the problem is. The woman. With the woman. So I started feeling, uh uh-uh, this one is becoming a bit uh, uncomfortable. Mm. So I went to God and I told him, uh, now me and you need to have a talk. Mm-hmm. You need to tell me what I need to tell people. Yeah. Because I need to have an answer. Say if uh, someone stands me up, I want to pray for you, God is going to give you children. Maybe God has told me you are never going to have children. Mm. You know, I would have speech yes. to tell them. Mm. So I told them, I, 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 I said, God, you really need, we didn't really need to have a talk. And mm. I give God all the glory because sometimes in our brokenness, sometimes in our end, mm. he just speaks and he yeah. just talks. Yeah. So I was kneeling on my bedside table and uh, my bedside uh, and I was praying mm. and I felt God speaking and the voice said, uh, I'm going to give you a child and you're going to them, name the child Amaria. Okay. I had never heard mm. about the name Amaria. To say the truth, I had never heard of a child called Amaria in my, you know, mm-hmm. group of friends right. or where. Mm-hmm. So I rushed to the dictionary to know, okay, God, you have said, I really need to know what That's does Amaria name. mean? Yeah. And to my, I don't know, I'll call it, uh, you know, uh, joy, mm-hmm. Amaria means promised of God. Amen. So that is what I woke up from that prayer point with. Mm-hmm. That you know God has heard me and he has said that he is promising a yes. child. That because I have said I'm going to give you a child named Amaria. Amaria which yeah. means it's a promise mm-hmm. from him. Mm-hmm. So I rose up uh, at a changed woman yeah. from that prayer yeah. point because yeah. I had something to tell people. Mm-hmm. So I am, so this is the fourth year, right? Mm-hmm. In our marriage. Mm-hmm. So, and uh, soon, soon, I think I, I made that prayer in the third year because soon afterwards, mm-hmm. I miss my period. Mm-hmm. Yes, I miss my period. And uh, of course, when you are waiting, you have pregnancy <laughs> kids. <laughs> You know, yeah. and the apps. Yes, and the apps, and you're checking your ovulation, you're checking everything. Yeah. So, Nacho Moa, Tumoja, and it was positive. positive. Oh, wow. thank you, God. And I told everyone, everyone that I knew, everyone on my phone book, everyone that cared to listen, mm. God has blessed yes. us with a child. Our Maria, Maria is here. Wow. And uh, yeah, you, as the pregnancy proceeded, that is. Uh, in the fourth week, I started uh, noticing some bleed, mm-hmm. some bleeding. Yeah. And uh, I, 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 I was like, ah, let me just go to the hospital to just, you know, see what was what the happen. problem. Yeah. And the first thing when you tell them you're pregnant, of course, what they do is they do a scan. Yeah. yeah. So they do a scan and uh, the sonographer who was doing the scan says, uh, there was a pregnancy, but right now this pregnancy is coming out and it's not viable. There is no way that, uh, you know, it's mm. going to stay here. So what you need to do is go to a doctor and do a process called DNC, that is cleaning the mm. uterus mm. so that, uh, you know, the, the baby does not uh, stay in your womb. Mm. And that's what I did. And uh, 
I, I went to and did the DNC because already the sonographer wrote that. Yeah. So when I went to the doctor, that's what he used. So and that was it. And uh, for 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 that uh, miscarriage, it was a it was a disappointment. Mm. Uh, because I had, uh, you know, told so many people, and now you have yeah. to tell them, ah, no, I, I don't have I the privilege. Yeah. Yes, I don't have. And sometimes people even don't know what to tell you. Yeah. They, that, the, the topic around infertility miscarriages is quite sensitive. Very. So sometimes just people just sometimes maybe pull away from mm. you or they just tell you, don't worry, you are going to get twins. Mm. <laughs> you know, people <laughs> think that they're encouraging you. Yeah. Yes. So I went, uh, by that time I had looked for another job because mm -hmm. I was already tired of mm -hmm. staying at home. So I went back to work as usual. We, of course, uh, you know, prayed together with my husband and mm -hmm. believed what God already had said mm -hmm. and moved on with life. So I went back to work. And uh, after two weeks, mm -hmm. as I was continuing uh, with work, mm -hmm. at that point I was working in... Uh, the office I was working in was in a hotel building in Nairobi. Okay. So I, I continued working. And one day, as I was taking some chips, two weeks after the DNC, mm -hmm. right? Or almost, yes, two weeks, because oh, almost three weeks, because mm -hmm. uh, it was after eight weeks. So three weeks after that, I was eating lunch because, you know, I, was, I continued to feel pregnant mm -hmm. even after the DNC. Mm -hmm. So I kept telling myself, or when I ask people, I still feel like I'm pregnant. Mm. They tell me, no, the hormones are just, you know, regulating themselves. Mm. So you, come on, askia kukula, you eat. eat. <laughs> if you want to sleep, sleep. Mm. With time, the hormones will regulate themselves. So I was eating, uh, at this moment, at this uh, day, I was just eating a, a plate of chips, mm. and I felt a sharp pain on uh, my abdomen. Mm -hmm. I felt a uh, really sharp pain. So the colleagues that uh, we were working with, we were working with, mm -hmm. told me, ah, what is wrong? Let's go to the hospital. Mm -hmm. Let us carry you. And I was like, no, you can't carry me. I can walk. Mm -hmm. But I think the, the how I looked after I felt the sharp pain, it was, I, I looked like I was in so much pain. Mm. You know, I can't, I couldn't see myself, but I was in pain. But mm. I was trying to tell them, no, I can walk. Mm. But they insisted, no, we need to carry you. And I thank God. I give God all the glory because uh, the word of God says that the steps of a righteous man are ordered by God. Yes. And I, I, I feel that I was in that office at that point. And to, uh, luckily, in that uh, hotel room, just across the hallway mm -hmm. was a clinic. It was uh, a, just a clinic that, you know, people would come and mm. uh, just uh, do a what? Do checkups. Check yes. Yeah. So they carried me from uh, the office across the hall, just a few meters, and to they the took clinic. me to the clinic. Mm. And the first thing uh, that uh, lady asked me is, are you pregnant? I told her, I don't think so, because <laughs> I was. I was, three but weeks ago. yes, three weeks ago, mm. but uh, it was, uh, you know, no, the pregnancy was not viable, and we did the DNC. Mm. So I don't think I can, I don't think it would be that quick. Mm. So, but she said, because of how, where you're saying the pain is, mm. let's just, uh, you know, rule that out and do a scan. Okay. So I was supposed to be taken to another hospital just in Nairobi town mm. to do a pregnancy scan. And now, right now, at this point, I am in so much pain. I mm. can't even see. I, I am in serious pain. By that time, my husband had already come. They mm. had already called him. So we walk across the street mm -hmm. to where the other hospital is. And I am in pain. Every step, I am just feeling pain. So we get to uh, the hospital. And of course, there is a line of pregnant women mm. waiting to. Yeah. Uh, to do their scan. Mm -hmm. And of course, mine is not showing, so you wait in line. Mm -hmm. But as I was waiting there, I start vomiting. I'm vomiting. I'm vo I can't even control it. You know how you try to control? Mm -hmm. I can't. So I'm vomiting, and it's like I'm going in and out of consciousness. So when the lady was calling the ladies from the line, said, uh, saw me, she said, okay, let's give her. She seems to not to be okay. Mm -hmm. let, me, let us give her the chance first, then you guys can follow. Mm -hmm. So I was wheeled into the, you know, a scan room. 
and now this sonographer asked me, you said you're not pregnant? I said, no, I'm, I was. <laughs> I don't think I am. Mm -hmm. But he made sure to do a thorough check. And to our surprise, there is a baby. Wow. Yes, there is a baby, but the baby is in a fallopian tube. Ouch. And had a, such a strong heartbeat at nine weeks. And she, he's saying, this baby is at nine weeks, Kulingana na how, you know, mm. he read. Mm. And she asked me, do you want to hear the heartbeat? And I was like, yes. So I felt the heartbeat and the baby was, you know, strong. Mm -hmm. But she told me the unfortunate news is that we can't keep this baby yeah, because yeah. the reason why you're vomiting is because the, your fallopian tube has, uh, uh, it's got, it has burst. Mm -hmm. And now you're bleeding into your uterus. And oh. this is a matter of life and death. So for you to save you, we need to go to take you to uh, an emergency surgery right away. So you have the heartbeat of the baby, but you already know that, mm. you know. And at that point now, uh, my pressure is really high. So they asked my husband, uh, do you want an ambulance? And he said, no, let me take her myself mm. to see, you know, to go and see what is going on. And uh, luckily enough, the clinic that I had gone to had an affiliate hospital in Nairobi West. Mm -hmm. And so they had called prior. Mm. So I, my husband was going like crazy. And uh, we get to the hospital and they are waiting for me yeah. with a wheelchair. And the doctor said, uh, this pressure is too high. We need first to stabilize it mm -hmm. and then go into surgery. That's the last thing I remember about that day. Wow. Yes. Uh, when you he was saying, out. yes, I blacked out. And uh, I woke up <laughs> after, you know, surgery. surgery, you woke up now, you're, how are you feeling? Uh, and I, I'm trying to, you know, the scar and all. And uh, the, 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 as I was leaving, I, I, I felt I needed to ask. Mm -hmm. So you have said that, uh, and the doctor said we could save the tube, we cut it out. So now you only have one tube. Mm. And I asked him, okay, now you're saying I have one tube. It is hard enough mm -hmm. to get pregnant with two. What do you think of the Number other one? one? And he said, uh, this tube looks shriveled. We cannot put our hope in it. And I was so heartbroken at mm. that point, Amanda, and I felt so, actually I felt angry. I mm. felt you, you're giving me news that I didn't want to hear. Mm. And I told my husband, I'm never going to that hospital again. Mm. But it was the heartbreak of knowing, okay, so this means that maybe at some point, I am, maybe I'm never going to uh, get children. Mm. But still, I remember that God had, you know, promised. promised you. And I know, I uh, in my life up to that 25 years, for a short period, I had not got to be a promise keeper. Mm. I had not got to, you know, help me in situations mm -hmm. that I cried out and he helped me. So mm. I said, okay, let me hold on to his word. Yes. And uh, wait, he, he said that Maria is coming. I know that Amaria is coming. Mm. So, of course, uh, I go home, I heal, and friends and family are coming to, you know, just uh, say poorly. And you can't even explain. Mm. And uh, sometimes the loss of an unborn baby, you don't even know how to grieve uh -huh. it. To mm. grieve it, People even don't expect <clears throat> you to cry because yeah. they're wondering, what are you crying about? Mm. But you're so broken, you feel like a part of you is is gone. You yeah. feel like, I wish I could, you know, uh, something should have. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I should have held a tangible thing. I should have seen this tangible thing. So sometimes you cry in your bed mm -hmm. alone. When people are coming, you're, yes, yeah, we're yeah, strong. You're strong. Uh, we're okay. But in, in your bed, you feel something is missing. Yeah. So of course the healing, uh, the, I, I got to some few weeks and then I went back to work because what else is there mm -hmm. to do? Life mm -hmm. goes on. <laughs> so you go on with life. Yeah. So I go back to work and I am now accustoming to, you know, just uh, being, uh, going back to, to waiting fit. on the promise, mm -hmm. you know. And uh, six months later, six months later, mm. I... I, I I got another. Of course, when you're waiting, you're always testing. Yes. And every every point of I your period is late. You yes. run to Test. the, you know. <laughs> so I, I I my period got late. 
And of course I test again mm-hmm. and I have a positive test. Wow. And I say, wow, my God, you know, you promised you mm. have come. Mm. And even this time, I told everybody <laughs> who cared to listen. <laughs> Again, yes, God everybody. Has oh, it. God has done it. My <laughs> fallopian tube, whom they, which they say is revolved. Yes. The Lord is working. Mm. And uh, yes, yeah, so I continued with the pregnancy. It was still an easy one. But at uh, six weeks, I saw some bleeding. Ouch. Yes, I saw some bleeding. And I'm like, where? God, now how am I going to tell people? You, I, mm. I should have, you know, what am I going to do? Keep, keep telling me, oh, Pole. Oh, and you know, sometimes that, oh, Pole is mm. quite hurting. Yeah. You want people to tell you Pole, but still you don't want to have the conversation. Mm. So I go back to the people that I had told and I told them, you know, I have miscarried. And this time I was quite broken. Mm. So I went to my um, the, my manager at work and I told her, I don't think I want to work. Of course, I had told her that I'm pregnant. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so she asked me, no, why? You need to just stay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And uh, okay, before I told her that I want to leave work, of course, I went when I saw the bleeding, I went to, to, the, to the doctor. Mm-hmm. Yes. And uh, they do a scan. And I met a very nice lady and she told me, uh, well, Will the, the placenta looks like there's a placenta for me, mm-hmm. but it is not attaching to the embryo is not attaching or something that they say. It. So, mm-hmm. but there is also a bleed that can be seen inside your womb. So what we do is we wait it out. We wait uh, for two weeks. Mm-hmm. We see if uh, the bleed is going to clear so that the placenta can have space to form. So I went home full of hope Mm -hmm. that uh, this bleed uh, in Jesus' name, (laughs) you know, it's going to go down. Mm -hmm. So after two weeks, of course, I go back and uh, the bleeding continues. Mm. So I go back and the doctor says, unfortunately, it seems like even this one, she called it a blighted ovum. It's a blighted ovum and there's nothing we can do. There's no supplements. There's no medicine. What you do now is uh, she gave me an option. I give you a full surgery, you know, where you are dead, the whole Mm -hmm. of you, (laughs) or you go and do another DNC, you know, where you are half, you can see what is happening. Mm -hmm. And I opted for the second second option. Mm -hmm. I went back to the same doctor and uh, he cleaned everything. And uh, I remember that time I was so broken and I'm crying. And I'm feeling like I have failed my husband. And I remember apologizing to him after the anesthesia had kicked in. Mm. That's what they call it, yes. So you know that same, all your emotions, mm. sometimes mm. you give your stories. <laughs> <laughs> so I am crying and telling him, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry that I failed you. And he's like, no, you didn't fail me. Because mm. right at that point, I felt like my body has failed. What it's supposed to do as a woman, you mm-hmm. know? You need to... Hold on to that pregnancy. What's wrong with your body? Why is it not Mm. doing what it's supposed to do? So we went home. I was quite heartbroken for that second time. Mm. And sometimes when it is the second time, you you don't even tell everybody else. Because now you you feel like they have told you sorry for so many times. You just want to keep. So you mourn alone. You grieve alone. And uh, maybe at that point, your husband is so used to it mm. that even for him, he's saying, what is it wrong and now? Let's mm-hmm. move on. But at that point, maybe you as a woman, that's the most time, you, that's that's the brokenness. That's yeah. where you are. You're broken. Mm. So I went to my manager. I felt that I couldn't continue to work. Mm. So I went to my manager and I told her I need to quit. I had not told her that I had lost the baby. Mm. I need to quit my job. And she's like, why? If it's your pregnancy that is, you have morning sickness, don't worry. I'll give you time. Mm. You can come at 10 if you want. You can sleep on Mondays. She was, she was any, nice. yeah, she was really nice. Mm. But I told, I couldn't even bring to tell her that I am, have had another miscarriage. So yeah. I told her, no, I just feel like my body needs to rest. And she released me and I went home. And now here at home, I'm back. I'm not uh, doing uh, anything. Uh, I'm back and I'm like, where? Now I need really to just ask this God again because Mm -hmm. 
what's going on? Yeah. So that period was a time of just prayer. I was yani just constantly in prayer. In fact, most people used to ask me, hey, why are you so, so thin? They didn't know that I am three days fast this week, three days <laughs> fast the other week. Because, you know, sometimes only what, the hope that you only have, it's God, and yeah. you're praying yeah. to like like this God you promised. Yeah. You promised. You need to hear me. So I and, and I remember one time when I was praying, mm. and I told God, "You said you promised. I I, I really need to know what's going mm-hmm. on now." That's the fourth year. We're yeah. in the fourth year in our marriage, and God spoke to me again, and I thank I thank God that I could hear Him mm-hmm. at that point. Yeah. of my life because otherwise if the voice of God was not you know giving me courage and mm-hmm. hope I think it would have been a really hard time for me yeah so he said you know what kid uh I give you that other pregnancy mm-hmm. because I wanted to give you a ray of hope they said that your your tube is shriveled mm-hmm. I wanted to show you that that tube is working a hundred percent so don't be you know, troubled. Mm-hmm. And then he said, and w- not only will I give you Amaria, mm-hmm. I'll give you two babies. One you'll name Amaria, the other one you'll name, you name Nathaniel. Nathaniel means gifted of God. Mm-hmm. And again, I woke up from that, uh, you know, yes, with another hope, yeah. filled of hope and filled with two uh, babies. Yes, two babies. Now I have two. Mm. And in fact, I shared with my husband. And every time people, we would go to, you know, a gathering and people would ask, ah, how many years have you been married? And he said, four. Do you have children? Yes, they are coming. That's my husband. would stand and say, yes, they are coming. We have two children, Amaria and Nathaniel. Wow. Even before we had seen them. That is but faith. Yes, he believed in that and we believed in that. Mm. And I woke up from that one with that promise Mm -hmm. and knowing that my tube is capable of, you know, conceiving. conceiving. So that is the fourth year. In the fifth year, and because I I thought uh, the cycle that God is uh, giving me is six months, Mm -hmm. (laughs) every six months I'm waiting. Where is my baby God? Every six months, Mm. that turned into the fifth year, that turned in 20, that was in 24, Mm -hmm. for uh, 2016, mm. 20, uh, 2017. Here, nothing. The six months turns into years. Yes, You're still yeah. waiting, and people are wondering why are you not doing anything about it. Of course, sometimes we we would uh, you know try here and there to go supplements mm. or what. But I, the grace that God had given me for that time, I I I, I continually say it is the grace of God. Yeah. Because people never saw like we had a problem. And actually, uh, of course, there were, uh, you know, a couple of times that I would feel so broken. Mm. But most of the time, God had given me so much grace. So I I continued serving. Mm-hmm. And then I, uh, I go into full-time entrepreneurship, into fashion. So I am busy. I am serving uh, the Lord, and I am just, uh, you know, thriving mm. in my yeah. weight. Mm-hmm. Uh, and uh, it was a season of, uh, you know, uh, seeing that, you know, God, I, I am waiting. Mm-hmm. I am waiting for you. You promised. You have promised twice, so, not once. Yes, yeah. Twice. Mm. So let me just wait on you. Mm. And I remember in 2018, uh, a friend, uh, a sister. Uh, he, uh, she is a sister from another family mm-hmm. and she asked me she sat me down and she asked me Kate what do you think about this issue of children I'm like what do I think <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah you seem not to be bothered and ears are moving and I'm like okay yes I'm waiting on God yes you're waiting on God but uh, what are you doing about it mm-hmm. I think you're not serious and I think you as the woman, and she told me, she gave me a lecture, you women are the ones that, you know, take charge of their family. You need to take charge. And I was like, oh, yeah, maybe, maybe I'm just joking around. <laughs> <laughs> I need to be serious about this. I need to, you know, try and... But uh, you are trying. Yes. Oh, trying is okay. Mm. But now be serious about the avenues that you take. You know, you take, uh, there are measures that you take. Maybe you go to a facility doctor, maybe mm. you check 
what is maybe something you know is wrong yeah so at that particular time you had not checked if you had any issue no i i knew i have no issues just the time of the t- god <laughs> yes and the tube yes so you didn't even ask the doctors why these miscarriages were of course they, they they t- they say mostly they say they are unexplainable you know if you have no issue you don't have uh, like PCOS you mm. don't have like you know they, they can't is, yes yeah. they can't explain it's unexplained infertility that's what they used to say so and unexplained infertility you 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 just try maybe unaambiwa achukua kunywa sijui hibiscus you know you know the 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 guy that we had yeah. he said uh, mm-hmm. It doesn't mean that you the, the person doesn't have a problem. The yes. problem is there is not is just mm-hmm. the technology yes that we have does not <laughs> give cannot show uh-huh. exactly the problem where it is. Yes. Yeah, so maybe that is what happened. Exactly. So they don't have an answer as well. Yes. <laughs> but there is a, pro- a there problem. There is a problem yes, yes. but they term it unexplained mm. infertility. No, okay. So what you do is just uh, wait. Mm-hmm. They, they actually say you just Wait. wait so for some they will give you uh, maybe uh, some fertility to to you boost your ovulation mm. and sometimes you are ovulating sour mm. so they get tell you let's uh, give you this for boosting ovulation and me at that point maybe i would like at some point i went to a doctor the, the, the doctor who told me about the blighted dawa after i went back to her she prescribed a, a dawa mm. for me So and she told me come after every month I didn't go back. <laughs> I think <laughs> one month we didn't go back. So in 2018 as uh, my my friend was uh, you know uh, giving me a lecture of seriousness mm. a friend that we we were in church together and she had been in weight mm-hmm. she uh, conceived mm-hmm. and she got triplets wow. and I was like hiya Well, maybe <laughs> who is your doctor? <laughs> who doctor? Which doctor did you see? Yeah. And uh, I, 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 I went to that doctor because mm. uh, I felt uh, maybe even me, my, 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 my miracle is here. Is here. Yeah. So I went to that doctor, and she, as I told you, he said, "We just wait. You, there is nothing we can. You wait." You are too young actually they used to be you are too young to be worried hey, you okay. wait <laughs> so of course he prescribed something and for that doctor the clinics were late night mm. there were a lot of people I mean kachoka and I got tired and I said ah imambo I let me just wait I I didn't really follow through to mm. uh a what a fertility plan and i keep uh, thinking that god needed to glorify himself yeah. with my story mm. you know he says that he does not share his glory yeah. with another mm-hmm. so if a fertility plan had worked i would say yes it was god but, but i used yes. you know but i think he just wanted to glorify himself with my story so that year 2019 2018 is the one and i am i have seen a fertility doctor and then i have fallen off the wagon i am not going for clinics i am not taking the medication so in 2019 when uh, you know you are making a resolution for mm-hmm. the year mm-hmm. my husband and i the story is you know the lecture is in my mind mm-hmm. and now my friend has gotten you know uh, babies so i told him you know what my husband we are growing old mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> and now we need to take this thing seriously and i'm very serious he knew that i was not very serious about mm. you know god is coming god is coming yeah. my husband mm. or so i told him this time round next year mm. so i told him next it is in 2019 in november that's when we are making the resolution next year we are going to look for a, a lump sum an amount of money like 400000 mm-hmm. If you get that 400,000, you know that we are going to the IVF clinic <laughs> and we are going to go that way. And I was serious. If God had not come in 2019, I think you would have Yes, because I was like, okay, you promised and even you can bring a Maria through other sources. Yeah. So that is Nove- that is in November, starting of November. Then in the uh that uh uh, uh that, that end of uh, November, mm-hmm. we went for 
for a couple's retreat. Mm -hmm. So, of course, it's a couple's retreat. You're happy, you're doing everything. And uh, come December, my period was supposed to come on the 22nd of December. Mm -hmm. I miss my period. Oh, yes. And I test. Of course, I'm always testing. <laughs> I test. <laughs> I test. It is a positive test. Wow. And I was in shock, Amanda. I was not happy. I was not... I was in shock hmm. because for three years, you see, uh, the other yeah. miscarriage was, you three know, years three years ago. ago. Mm. So I had gotten over that uh, period of feeling the loss and grief. So I was shocked. I was like, God, you want me to start crying again. Mm. You want to give me a positive and then it doesn't stay. Mm. So I was in shock. I did not tell anyone. <laughs> I, st I, st I, I, I kept my positive. Kids, kids, kids. <laughs> they are in my bed, lest, uh, lest it changes yeah. to negative. <laughs> so I kept it there. And every day, we, 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 I just told my husband. And uh, of course, uh, the triggers come uh, after the, the pregnancies. You have to, you know, maybe the other, the first, uh, when you go to the doctor, they ask you mm. about your history. Mm. When was the last pregnancy that you lost? What weeks were, or was it? Mm. So, of course, the week that the first one, I lost the first one at four mm. weeks mm. passes. And I'm like, oh, we are crossing our fingers. Mm -hmm. Then comes eight weeks. The eight week, the six weeks mm -hmm. or the eight weeks where the second, the second yes, one was. Then we are here, we are at uh, 12 weeks. And I'm like, wow, 12 weeks to me. We have look at the, 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 the third one. Yes, the periods that, you know, mm. I always lose the pregnancies at. So maybe I can tell a few people. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I, I tell my husband, I think I can tell family, excuse me, mm -hmm. and friends. And uh, we said yes. But uh, the trauma that comes with. Uh, Pregnancy after miscarriages is that you are always anxious. Mm. You don't know that if today when you go to the toilet, it's the it's day good. that you will see blood mm. or you will sleep. So you're always traumatized by the thought that you even find blood. Will come. Yes, oh. even when you get even a small, you know, for the discharge that comes mm. with pregnancy. You don't even want to look because you think it's blood. Mm. And it was, uh, uh, the emotions were, you know, here and there. You don't know if to be happy. Mm. You're happy that you're carrying a pregnancy, but you still are afraid yeah. that you might lose. Because, of, yes, one. you might lose this pregnancy. So I tell my husband, and now my husband told me, yes, it is at 12 weeks, we need to start praying for Amaria. We're not just praying for a baby. Mm. God promised for Amaria. Amaria. Mm. And we would say, thank you, God, for Amaria. Thank you, you promised. You promised it here. We mm. thank you because we we will see this, uh, you know, come to, to, yes. to pass. We mm. thank you because you promised and you have made it to pass. And uh, we thank, I thank God because uh, that period was the COVID period. Mm. 2020. 2020. You, have, you are going nowhere. You are just in the house, so you have time to pray. Mm. And at that point, of course, even uh, the churches were running from yeah. houses. Mm. So for me, it was just to go fellowship it at my pastor's house, go back home. Mm. I used to walk a lot. But the pregnancy was so smooth. Amen. It had uh, no complications. So we are there 24, 24 weeks. Uh, then we go to 32 wow. and until 42. I went up to the 42. Oh. Yes. <laughs> And uh, no, I went up to the 40th week mm. and uh, at the 40th week, uh, they did, the EDD date, uh, the baby didn't come. So they said, you know, now because the baby is not coming, we need to induce, induce you. you. Yes. And uh, of course there were bits of uh, things here and there, but uh, thanks be to God. Mm. Amaria was born on the 13th of September, 2020. Wow. 3.8 kg baby. Wow. And uh, when I see her, I see the promise of God. Mm -hmm. And uh, as uh, we were continuing with celebrating Amaria, you know, you're just there and you're just happy and enjoying. I get pregnant again. 
Wow. Yes, I, I, I was not using anything. In fact, mm. I could not feel <laughs> that I can get pre- if it got it it took seven years. Mm. And right now I'm, yes, I'm breastfeeding, I am I have a pressure from you know raising, raising a child. A child How, where I... is a pregnancy <laughs> coming from? <laughs> So it was not in my mind. Mm. So of course, after when you're breastfeeding, of course your periods take time to come back. Mm-hmm. So when they came back, uh, they came back, and then me, I'm I'm okay. I'm continuing well. And in in uh, December again, mm-hmm. in December again, I miss my period because my cycle is quite uh, regular. Mm-hmm. So the same date, the same period, I miss my period. And I check, I, I'm like, ah, it can't be pregnant. Mm. Actually, I'm not even <laughs> rushing to. It's just the hormones, you know. Mm. I am I'm breastfeeding, maybe the periods. I, I, it stays, two weeks, three weeks. I say, ah, watch me, Angali. <laughs> I check, and it is positive. positive. Nathaniel. And I'm like, Nathaniel is here. <laughs> hey, Nathaniel is here. And uh, I, 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 I am, at that point, I was just confused. Mm. I didn't know it was, it was going to be that soon. But I, I was rejoicing. So that was uh, after how many months? That of, was for Maria. That was uh, after one year. One year. Yes, after mm-hmm. one year, that's when I conceived because they are exactly two years apart. Oh, okay. Yes, that's when I con I conceived. Mm. Uh, Atalia. She's Atalia, not oh. Natalia. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I, 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 I. Of course, I know. I know because God, you spoke. I know. Mm. Definitely. This is Nathaniel. Mm. I am not even, in fact, I am not looking for a name. I am, I, this is Nathaniel. Yes. Then uh, the pregnancy was good, nothing. And um, the, the, the difference with this pregnancy is that I was not anxious. Of, mm. You know, I was worried. Mm. I am worried that it's going to be. You know, uh, yes, because mm. already I, I, I think how our mind works when you go through something and then, you know, your mind now walks with, yeah. uh, with, with that uh, yeah. positive thought. Mm. So I was uh, OK. And uh, the pregnancy, of course, was uh, cool. Nothing. In fact, people didn't even there was nothing to show that you're pregnant. Mm-hmm. Just eating and maybe adding a little yeah, bit of weight. <laughs> So I uh, excuse me. No, it's okay. I so I at at uh, at uh, you know uh, what is this? No, at at some point I got curious. Mm-hmm. I said, okay, I might be saying it's Nathaniel. Let me just get, confirm mm. <laughs> with a scan yes. that it is Nathaniel. Before you buy blue, yes, blue, blue, blue. Yes, let me just. I know it is Nathaniel, but let me just confirm. Yeah. Ha! Huh? The scan. Uh, wow, you have a girl. What do you mean? <laughs> Who's girl? <laughs> Are you sure? Please, oh, please, baby. Yeah. Uh-huh. I was shocked. I yeah. didn't even have a name. I don't have a name because, of course, I have a name from the mm. Lord. So I don't. And, and now I start telling people, wait, please, look for a name <laughs> from a girl. I don't even know. And people, CJ, Natalia, my friends, oh, CJ, what? And now, no word could, you know, I didn't feel this word, mm. uh, this name's feet and I kept saying you know people have had scans mm. and the babies they had been told these girls mm. and then it turns out it's boys let's wait I do another scan <laughs> this one and I, I asked I asked her you're sure mm. yes this one we're sure because as you can see the baby is big there's no way mm. it's a mistake and so I started uh, seriously praying for a name <laughs> I need to know what to call this girl you have blessed me God I am Happy, I don't want to seem like I'm, mm, I'm ungrateful. I grateful. have waited, mm-hmm. and you're blessing me with double portions like this. Please give me a name. Mm-hmm. And uh, in uh, in in 2021, something had happened. Uh, in 2020, as uh, Maria was growing up, mm-hmm. uh, when she was three months, people were not traveling. Yeah. So she was born in September. So when she was in three, uh, she was three months in December. In December. I visited my mom, mm-hmm. and uh, my mom had never asked me about what are you thinking about these things of children. She had never mentioned for mm. the seven years. 
So when she she got hold of the baby, at that point she was uh, battling cancer, mm. and uh, at this point she was really weak. Mm. And my baby, I told you, she was weak. Oh, yeah, heavy. So um, she was trying to hold the baby, but she's not able to hold the baby. Mm. And uh, uh, she tells me, you know, I keep asking God, what happened to my child? You know, to mm-hmm. me, what happened? What what did I do that? Uh, uh, was causing all these problems. Mm. And she kept t- saying that she used to pray that God would bless us. Mm. She never mentioned that she used to pray in her own yeah. way. And she told me of a story how I had fallen when I was uh, a small baby. I had fallen from a pickup. And she thought that's what, uh, you oh, know, the, yeah, the mechanism <laughs> oh, yeah. had, you know, disintegrated. Oh. So she kept praying and telling God Please. Mm. And that is in December 2020 when Amaria was three months. So when uh, Amaria was six months in April, my mom went to be with the Lord. Mm. Yeah, she rested. And she, uh, because uh, she had cancer, she was, after some time, the doctor said, you know, you need to take her home. There's nothing we can do. We're just leaving her pain. Mm. Just need to go and spend time with her. So she came to my house because at that point my siblings were living far away mm-hmm. and uh, she needed a house that she doesn't need to have stairs to climb. So she came to my house mm. and here I am with a small baby at six months. Mm-hmm. And I remember I used to, the, we puree food for Maria and we are puring food for, for her. Mom. So it was, uh, you know, we had, it was a, a bond that mm. was coming in. But at this point, of course, the doctors are preparing us. Mm. That, you know, you have few months or weeks mm. or days, but you are not even able to internalize that. Yeah. You have a small baby, to your first time mom, you're trying to breastfeed your baby, you're trying to, you know, uh, uh, all that comes with uh, mm. a baby, you know? Yeah. You're waking up for feeds at night, mm. so, and you're also waking up to, to, check, on to mom. check on mom. So there was a lot going on in mm. my life at that point. And I felt like I didn't even have a space to breathe. Yeah. I felt like, you know, and abruptly she she passed on. And I'm still in the space. I remember even during uh, the burial, my baby was just crying because she is with friends. Mm. She's a small baby. Yeah. She's just crying. I could hear the cry, but I need to be here, you know. I need to be here with my mom. So I... Uh, after we buried her, and of course you go home, mm. I thought, God, I, I, I have so many emotions. I don't yeah. even know what to say. I don't even know what to voice. Mm. And now people wonder if they come, they'll come and tell you how is the baby. Or, or yes, or, 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 or So there's so much going on. And yeah. I told God, I wish I could have uh, something like a therapy mm-hmm. where I could just, uh, you know, write and pour my heart to things that, you know, even people won't understand. Mm-hmm. You know, things that you don't even know. Questions, mm. maybe prayers, maybe things that you can't voice. Mm. That's a prayer that I made in 2020. Mm. So, and uh, you hear in December, in mm. December of 2020, mm. right? Yeah, Is it? Yeah, yes. You got pregnant. I conceived again. Mm. And so... Now you are now into what? It's a pregnancy. Mm. And here, Atalia comes. Exactly. 15th September. They almost shared that. (laughs) 15th September. In fact, they would have shared. It's Mm. just that 13th had a lot of other things that were happening Mm. over 2022. So she comes. uh, She was not as big as Amaria, but she was still a blessing. Mm. So I think uh, when, as we are continuing on with, uh, you know, raising the children, I take uh, Atalia to see my father. My father is still mm. alive. Mm. And my father says, you know what? Uh, uh, no, I didn't take her. I told her. Uh, I told her. I told him mm. that, that I'm expecting and it's a girl. And of course, I'm going to name her mom. Mm. Because uh, from where we... I I had to name Mm. her mom. And Mm. he said, I knew that a girl is going to be, I knew that a girl would be born in your home. I knew that your mother would be born in your home. I knew because uh, because of what you went through, the care that you uh, took to your mom. She had to come to your Mm. house. 
And that's when I started exalting God. And I got the name Atalia. Mm -hmm. That means you are exalted. Mm -hmm. God, you are exalted. I don't know what you're doing. You said Nathaniel. Yeah. I, I am sure I didn't hear wrong. <laughs> but here Maybe is he's Atalia. Coming. Yes, here is Atalia. <laughs> And you are exalted, God. Mm. And that is uh, my uh, two beautiful babies, Amaria, promised of God, wow. and Natalia, God is exalted. Oh. Because even the smallest things that I cried out to him, mm. he answered. Yes. You know, in times of grief, you don't even know what to say. And here, he knew that when we see Washuka, she's called Natalia Washuka, that's mm. named after my mama, mm. that we will glorify God and we will remember that, you know, we will have something to remember. I, I give this story. Mm. You know, I remember my mom through that and uh, how resilient she was. A woman was mm. really resilient. And I see that girl and my family, we rejoice. Everybody else who knows how I waited, mm. even in the, the village, and now they know know that you know we have there's our shuka who who has come mm. and we thank god because of that and i thank god because of the testimony that he has given me amen yeah and uh, uh that's uh, my journey uh, mm. but still I, I i came back after you know i'm raising my children mm. i came back and i asked god you know you god you are god yeah these pregnancies did not take any man effort. Mm -hmm. It just took your effort. Mm. Why did you have to wait seven years? Mm. Why? Why did, what was the lesson? I yeah. asked him. I really need to know what you're teaching me because I felt like the seven years just went. I didn't really know. What was the lesson? So in the beginning of this year, mm -hmm. that's when uh, I was asking God those questions. My baby had just turned one year. Mm. So now you're you're tr trying to come back to, you know, normalcy because yeah. raising children is, you know, it's hard, especially. It's work. Yes, those two that <laughs> mm. are. So in this one year, I'm trying to ask God, for seven years, I, I, I'm seeing this miracle. But they took seven years. Mm. Something that you could have done in the first year. Yes. What was the purpose? What was the reason? And at that point, I am having my friends and colleagues and people that I know that are going through waiting. Mm -hmm. They are waiting. They are having miscarriages. And of course, they know that I have gone through that. Mm -hmm. And they have, they are, maybe they are expecting that I have something that I can share. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it is really hard. Yeah. You, you actually know that it is just by the grace of God yeah. that you went through. Mm -hmm. So sometimes you don't even have a word. You can just tell them, hold on to God. Sometimes you don't have a word of encouragement. Mm. And God told me, told me, you, you asked me about seven years. Mm -hmm. Yes. It was so that at this point, you can encourage others. Mm. At this point, when the, your blessings are here, you can encourage others. And he told mm -hmm. me, I need you to write a journal or to design a journal. Mm -hmm. The journal would be called Wings for the Broken Hearted. Wow. Wings for the Broken Hearted, meaning that in times of grief, in terms of loss, mm. in terms of disappointment, that you can turn to the word of God. Mm -hmm. That in his promises, his promises are sure. Yes. And that he keeps his promises. Mm. So, and uh, that is what I did. And I designed that journal. And God just gave me scriptures and uh, that are in that journal. And of course, there is the, a note, uh, a place where you can note mm -hmm. your questions, your prayers, awesome. your, un, your unheard Things that you cannot voice mm. to people because sometimes you have battles that are raging within you, but really you don't even know. If yeah. I tell Amanda, if she will, you know, mm. understand where I'm coming from. Mm. So, yes, that is what started with this year. That's the ministry that uh, God has given me mm. from, uh, you know, the trials that I went through. And a scripture that I really love mm -hmm. that is in Second uh, Corinthians 1 mm -hmm. from verse 3 to 4. And it says, praise be to God mm -hmm. or praise be to our Father who comforts us in times of our troubles yes. so that we may be able to comfort others okay. when the time of trouble, when their time of trouble comes. Mm. So that scripture and uh, sums up, you know, yeah. the journal that God gave me, the ministry that God has given me mm. of encouraging others who are in wait, oh, of man. encouraging others who are in disappointment, mm. in grief, mm. 
you know, of heartache. Sometimes yeah. uh, even uh, there are people who are separate from, you know, husband and mm. wife. And it feels like, you know, you it's a death. Yeah, it's yeah. something. Mm. So that is uh, what the journal is about. And I thank God because I was able. He gave me so much grace mm. to be able to stand in way. And uh, he, I, I, I thank God because I was able to hear him mm. at that point because he gave me hope to move on. And mm. I was able to stand in his word. I was able to know that he is a promise keeper. Mm. Yeah, so uh, Amanda, wow. that's my testimony. Wow. Yeah. And um, <laughs> I know in this journey, you've uh-huh. mentioned that you have worked with your husband. Mm-hmm. He never, he never let you. Mm-hmm. Actually, he was the most encourager yeah. you had. Yes. What can you tell couples? Mm-hmm. What can you tell men mm-hmm. who are uh, <clears throat> who are in the season? Mm-hmm. Uh, the couples that are in the waiting period mm-hmm. and uh, uh, the 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 impact that mm-hmm. your has the role that your husband yeah. played. Mm-hmm. Apart from saying "I do till death do us part," mm-hmm. that. You know, you know that that word yes. is very heavy. Yes. You see it when uh, you are going through thick and thin. Uh-huh. Yeah. So what what can you tell other men? Yeah. Uh, and uh, and also something to, for your husband. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, you know, as you say, uh, my husband was my biggest supporter. And I remember he kept, uh, if someone would come and ask me, mm. you know, most of the time I told you the stigma is on women. Yeah. So people will go numa numa and they're asking, wait, wait, you mean Ishida? Mm. What's the problem? And my husband would say, who asked you? Okay. And mm. even if someone was asking him, he mm. would tell them, who told you that God uh, brought us together for children? Mm-hmm. He may, we are not here for children. Mm. We are married and we are complete as the two of us. And that was uh, the biggest, uh, you know, leap that I would walk on. You know, like uh, mm. when you are, you have cushion, yeah? Because yeah? I knew that I had his support. Wow. He defended me even when in rooms that uh, I was not in. You wow. know, sometimes uh, relatives or people mm. would try to throw in. Yes. And he would tell, who told you that we were... And who told you even? How do you know? It's not me who mm-hmm. has the problem. You know? Cause <laughs> Salute, Mr. Andrew. <laughs> yes. He kept uh, saying that. And uh, I, 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 I got that support from him. Apart from the word of God, I keep saying that his support mm. helped me to navigate even uh, from uh, the side, you know, where there were questions. Because mm. I knew that he got my back. Yes. He got my back, even if someone would try to say something. And again, he believed. God gave me the word. And he believed. Mm. You know, he would have said, ah, mm. you know, he would have said. But he believed. And now, as the head of the house, as the leader, mm. he started, you know, confessing in faith wow. what already God had told him. Mm. And we, we we had a blissful marriage at that point of uh, waiting. We never had a problem with, you know, uh, uh, talking, uh, you know, uh, uh, issues. Mm. Of course, uh, couples always have issues yeah, here and there. Mm. But ours was never about children, mm. never about children. In fact, when I would get uh, anxious and start telling him, you know, my ovulation is today. Where? <laughs> 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 what's, what's, what's going on? He would tell us, hold, hold. Let's, let's just go with the flow. Let's not uh, yeah. be calendared. Mm. And that is uh, something that I give thanks for. Mm. And to God for giving me such a wonderful husband. Yes. And also to him. Mr. Joe, I know he's watching. Yes. yes, he's my biggest supporter. You are, uh, uh, you know, an example to so many men that are going uh, through uh, this uh, challenge, and you are an example of uh, what holding on to, you know, to faith and what God, uh, you know, has put in mm. for others. And I know, and I know, and I we keep talking about this, that you are a gem. There are many, wow. you cannot find many like you. So I salute you and I love you so much. And oh. thank you 
for being such a support system to me and also for holding on also to faith and right now to being the excellent father, an excellent father to our girls. Wow. Yes. And to uh, the couple that are waiting. Yes. Uh, unity is key. The Bible says that where there is unity, God commands a blessing. Yes. And sometimes uh, your wife uh, or your husband, mm. sometimes even mm-hmm. the husbands go through yes. emotions that they can't talk to. Sometimes you just need to hold on and say, we're in this together. Mm. We're in this together. We are walking this journey together. And however, whichever uh, you know end it comes, we mm. are still in this together. Yes. I keep telling people that especially people who know christ that we are complete as we are in christ we are complete Mm. children do not complete us yes jobs or whatever else that they are good things Mm. wealth or what they do not complete us Mm. we are i am fully complete as kate in christ yes amanda is fully complete in christ Mm. another man is fully complete in christ Mm. whether he's a father whether he has a generation or not and waiting on God is never in vain. Mm. The Bible says that those who put their trust in oh God, God can never be put to shame. Yes. Yes, you may see, you know, your period is just moving and you're wondering, okay, we are just okay, we are happy. Mm. Sometimes, uh, you know, you're here and there and God sees you through through so many things. And mm. some of these uh, are tests, they are so expensive and God continues to provide. Mm. So please be united. Yeah. Please hold on to unity. God commands a blessing to unity. Mm. Unite with your wife, unite with your husband, pray together. Mm. Ask God where is, uh, you know, you're leading us. And sometimes like us or like other, so many other people, God uses you. God is using whatever period you're going through, whatever mm. trouble you're going through, mm. to glorify yourself. The disciples of uh, Jesus once took a blind man. I, I don't know if he was a blind or a lame man mm. to him, and uh, they asked him, "What did uh, the parents of this man do? Mm-hmm. do? Mm. Or uh, why? What sin mm-hmm. did this man commit mm. that he is blind?" And Jesus said, "Ah." Uh, it is not because of anything the parents did or mm. any sin that he had committed. It is because God wanted to glorify himself in this moment. Yeah. So sometimes uh, we may go through trials. It's very important to know as Christians mm. that sometimes God can use us for his glory. Mm. And sometimes the using may not only be good. Yes. It may be, you know, it may be uh, there'll be shaking mm-hmm. here and there. Mm-hmm. Even Paul said he always had a thorn mm. in his flesh but for the glory of God. God. So yeah. once you know that, once you accept, you know, <laughs> I am being used for the glory of God. Mm. At least the grace is sufficient. Yeah. At least you're able to wait. Mm. And at least you're able to tell God, uh, you know, uh, if you want to be glorified through me, mm. so be it. Mm. Yes, uh, that's uh, in many words. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I think I can tell. Okay. Was in wait. And um, what is the most... Would I say statement that mm-hmm. hurt you most during all this mm-hmm. this uh, period, these seven years of waiting? Okay, I don't think really it's a statement; it's a gesture. Mm-hmm. Okay, I was in church, and uh, the pastor singled me out. Let me come. I want to pray for you. Because if he had known that I am waiting. Mm. Of course, I know he meant it for good. Yes. He meant it for good. He was praying for me. And everybody is looking at me. Go there. And I cried so much in front of that pastor. I was mm. not crying because I felt inadequate. I mm. cried because I felt you should have come. And, yeah. and I give you what, why we are not both. That. I give you the story mm. behind why where we are you Mm. know rather than calling me in front of the congregation i did not raise my hand Mm. i did not you know sometimes you ask who wants to be prayed for and you raise you You have gone there Mm. by you know your own effort but yeah i didn't raise my hand i didn't ask to be prayed for and you are the first that you call me me. and now people now she's crying she's going and people now start hurumiaing you and i felt so that was one point, mm. one point I, I always remember. And I remember I cried. 
I cried in the car. And we were with friends. I could not stop crying. Mm. And we are going to, uh, we were going with the friends from church. And they said we need to go and eat lunch somewhere. And I'm feeling, I can't even, they're, they're wondering, what are you crying about? Mm. I can't even voice what I'm crying because I feel like, if I say I'm crying because the pastor called me to pray for, what's wrong with you to pray for me? Mm. What's wrong with you? I cried. I cried. They left me in the car. I cried. I, cr- I even felt like just going home mm. and not being in the gathering. But uh, the Lord gave me a, a, a little strength. Yeah. And I joined, actually not a little strength. I told myself, you know the, the veil you put, mm. kids? These people are wondering what is wrong with you. Go. Oh. <laughs> and sit there mm. and uh, eat your eat whatever have mm. time yeah. then go and cry home and that's mm. what I did but uh, yeah those are some of the things that uh, you know they may seem mm. well thought of mm. people are thinking well of you but it's it brings the out. way they bring it yeah. out. Yes, or even no, they mean well. They mm. are perfectly meaning yeah. well. Mm. But it opens the wound in you. You yes. just find yourself crying. It's just like someone may tell you, I ah, don't worry, you miscarriage. Uh, uh just thank God you didn't give birth to uh uh you didn't give birth to uh, you know, uh the baby was not there and then died. You mm. you understand? Mm. And they may think they're encouraging you, but it is it brings out another emotion. Like you, you I don't think you understand. Mm. They mean well, people mean well, but sometimes they really don't know how to express how to express it. it. And that is one of the, the reasons why uh maybe God I felt that a journal is important. Because like right that time, maybe I could have gone and said, Why did you allow that pastor to mm. come? You know, and just let it out. Mm. Because some things even your own husband cannot understand. Yeah. Because you're crying. He doesn't know what to do with the crying. You're not saying why you're crying. You mm. know, even if you say it's because I I, I I am I want babies, at least he'll tell you they will come. But now you don't even have a reason mm. why you're crying. You just cry. No, you have a reason. Yes. You have a reason. <laughs> it's only that maybe that reason. Yeah. You're the only one who understands it. Good. Yeah. Yes. Mm. So that was one gesture that really broke my heart. Mm. Yes. And uh, yeah. But uh, the society what? did not talk a lot. Ah, uh, not the... really. Mm. Not really. I I had. I thank God because I had really supportive uh, people, mm. family. My my mom in law so supportive. She kept praying day in and day out. Mm. My mom in uh, my my mom my mm. birth mom. She never mentioned, but I know that she was, she was praying. praying. My brothers, my sisters, no one, okay. no one talked. Okay, maybe they talked, mm, but they but really didn't. They were sensitive know, yes, they when you were there. Yes, and you did. yes mm. well, they think you're barren or something. You know, they mm. didn't use those words. But of course, you could hear, you know, someone, you know, mm. here and there. Mm. But those ones really didn't. I, I have the backing of God, mm. my husband, yeah. and I promise. I, even if you say, nothing moved me. All right. Yeah. Mm. So how did you heal uh-huh. from of seven years? Mm-hmm. I know it is not a one-day healing. Yes. Yeah. So... Uh, can you tell us your process of healing and wow. how how you manage to heal mm-hmm. or if you have or if you are still even in the, that <laughs> yeah. healing process uh-huh. yeah uh, i think i can say um my healing process started when i got my baby and when i got my baby uh, uh, a group in the group uh, in my group of friends mm people started getting married, okay? Mm-hmm. I told you I got married early young. on. Yes. So in my group of friends, people started getting married. Mm-hmm. And uh, once they got married, not as in close friends, not one, not two, not three, they were struggling with getting children. Yeah. And I was like, okay, God, you, you allowed me to go first. Mm. So that when this... People see me, these friends of mine, they see me holding this baby. Mm -hmm. They will say, come and Kate, if it is the God of Kate who came, even Mm. for us, without even me speaking Mm. to them. As in, that's just something that brought, you know, that light bulb Mm. in your, ah, God. 
you just allowed me to go fast. Mm. You just allowed me to go fast. So that this other, because you see when you have waited and you see someone else waiting, you feel their pain. Mm. You feel what the, the unseen pain and you feel the unseen struggles because yeah. you have been through that. Mm. So I felt that's how my, my healing journey started. Because mm. not holding the baby, but knowing that I went fast Mm. so that these other people could be encouraged and knowing that even their time is coming yes yes that is the healing process because i i I felt that you know god is not unfair Mm -hmm. he's he's not a god who just uh, you know lets you struggle for Mm. nothing he's Mm. not unfair Mm. and these people also i believe that they are going to you know get uh healing and mm. uh, right now even as i continue working with people i am working with quite a few women mm-hmm. and we keep holding on because i went before and i know sometimes i will feel someone will tell me we are praying and this happens and then a miscarriage happened and i'm so heartbroken mm, because now it just flashes out yes i'm so heartbroken it uh, just flashes out but i hold on to uh, the promise. Mm. God is a promise keeper. Yeah. That if he could restore me with even no tube, mm. you know, with a tube that was called Shivon, mm. it can also, re- he can also restore others. That's why I speak. I, I told you, Amanda, I speak of my testimony each and every day mm. and everywhere that, uh, you know, I am called upon to speak yes. because I know that in the process of my healing, mm. it also brings healing to someone. Yeah. True. Mm-hmm. True. Yeah. Wow. wow. So, okay, I can see you have your journal here. Yes. Wings for the broken hearted. It's mm-hmm. a nice one. Mm-hmm. 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 So do you do you sell them? Do you Yes, I sell them mm-hmm. at uh, 650 shillings. 650. Yes. <laughs> Guys, <laughs> you need to get this. Yes. Yeah, mm. 650. Yes, okay. shillings. Mm. Yeah, and uh, it's a, I, I have two copies mm-hmm. free to give. Okay. Two copies. If someone near, feels anywhere, today I, I just need that journal mm. and maybe they don't even have the amount. Mm. I, am, I have two that I can give out. And I will add two. Yes. So the first four. <laughs> Agent. Yes. <laughs> Agent yes, you yes. get. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I thank God for my testimony. I mm. thank God for how He has worked with me, and I thank God for the ministry that He yes. birthed mm. through it. Mm. And I thank God because of the testimonies that we are going to have mm. with the stories that we continue with the people that are hearing and they are holding on to faith. Yes. You know, the Word of God says that uh, it is without faith it is impossible to please, please God. God. That those who come to him, they must believe that he is and mm. that he is a rewarder mm. of those that seek him diligently. Yeah. So holding on to faith, faith pleases God. Mm-hmm. It's, it's as little as you have. Hold on to faith and tell him, God, I know mm. that I am going to have a testimony. Yes. However long it takes, mm-hmm. hold on to his word. Mm. That is true. And this journal has a lot of mm. words, uh, the, the promises of God. Mm. When you're in time of uh, sorrow, you're in time of grief, loss, or whatever mm. else you may be going through, uh, scriptures that just God gave me, they are many. Yeah. But these are just uh, some of them. Mm-hmm. And I know that if you journal, even if you don't journal, you talk to God and mm. hold on, hold to Him to His promises, He's going to comfort. There is power in writing, though. Yes. There is power in writing. It's yes. true. Mm. Yeah. So when, when you write something, mm-hmm. it is easy to remember, even if you don't go back in the journal and mm-hmm. start reading it, mm-hmm. there is that thing. Yes. It's like, God, <laughs> Yes. In please, ones, consult yes. my notes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> go back there mm-hmm. and, and check mm-hmm. where I've written. Mm-hmm. You know these people. Yes. Yeah. 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 Okay. Thank yes. you so much. So what are you telling those who are in waiting, mm-hmm. uh, especially um, those who are have uh, conditions. Yeah. They might have them, some who know them mm-hmm. and some who don't know, mm-hmm. who are in the same, who are in the same uh, situation as you are. It's yes. unexplainable infertility. Mm-hmm. So you just there, you'll be like, really? 
I thought actually, you are doctors. Yeah. I thought you are doctors. You should know. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So yeah. So what are you telling them as a word of encouragement? Mm-hmm. And uh, yes, uh, well, I think I'll encourage uh, people that um, you know sometimes uh, there are things uh, that uh, we see they seem impossible, mm-hmm. right? Mm. Uh, there is so much impossibility in the world. Yeah. So the word of God says that with man it can be impossible, but with God nothing it's is impossible. With man, yes, nothing is impossible. Mm. With God, nothing is impossible. Mm. I believe, and I believe that uh, God can bring healing. Yes. I believe that God can restore. Mm. I believe that even if someone says uh, your tube is shriveled, God can still use that to give back mm-hmm. and give you not one, even two. Mm. I believe in the conditions, you know, that uh, they have been written down. Mm. I believe that God can heal. Mm. And I also believe that God can use even doctors. Mm. Okay. God can use doctors to, you know, uh, uh, help with the conditions. Mm. God can use uh, other avenues. See, like for me, I was uh, ready to go to IVF. God can use, people are even, uh, God can use adoption. Yes. I know of a friend who did that. Mm. So there is uh, so much that God can use. But you have to hold on to him mm. who is the creator of everything that exists. First it, cal- it comes from him. Yes. Then everything else flows down. Mm. It comes from him, then everything else flows down. down True. Because it is he is God. Mm. He knows. He created you, Amanda. He mm. says in uh, he was telling Jeremiah, before even I formed you, I in knew you. Womb, yeah. Yes, I knew you. Mm. So God knows us. God knows even the conditions that we are going through. He can mm. bring healing miraculously. He can yes. bring healing through doctors. He can bring um healing uh, through uh, other avenues, adoption, mm. uh, and so forth, but he has to be the center first. Yes. So that uh, the grace to continue with, uh, you know, mm. whatever you are doing. Mm. And uh, he orders our steps. He will order. Yeah. He will order your step and uh, you are being ordered and you so, see maybe you adopt and he's ordering mm-hmm. that step and you know this is from God. Mm. This is what God you wanted. Mm. So keep holding on to faith Please, if you are in waiting, yeah. hold on to faith. If you are seeing a doctor because of uh, one condition or the other, hold on to faith. He yeah. is the healer. Mm. He is the one who has given knowledge to the doctors. Hold on to God and keep telling him. Keep uh, talking to him as your father. He is our father. And I know with time you are going to give a testimony. It may not be the same as mine, but you are going to give a testimony. You indeed, you are going to testify of the Lord's goodness in the land of the living. Amen. Yes. Amen. Mm-hmm. So where can people reach you mm-hmm. or can follow you mm-hmm. now that you have a ministry? Yes. Yeah. So people can continue to be encouraged. Yes. Mm-hmm. Uh, I um, do daily um uh, devotions on uh, my social media pages uh, on uh, Facebook it's uh, Catherine Wamoyo hyphen Kanye mm-hmm. on uh, Instagram it's Kate Wamoyo Njue, Wamoyo Njue. Mm-hmm. and I also have a YouTube channel where I share the, I minister, I am a minister of the gospel so I minister the YouTube channel is Kate Njue and also, you can WhatsApp me, you can call me, you can text me. My number is 0725-530-963. Okay. Yes. Thank you so much, Kate. Mm-hmm. Indeed. Um, God is not, he does not use our timer. Mm-hmm. Yes. His timing is just the best. Yes. And he's never late. Yes. Yeah. Mm. It's only as you man who will be like, mm-hmm. hey, yes. Yeah, but God's timing is the best. Amen. And um, to everyone who has watched this, um, let us be sensitive mm-hmm. on what we tell the people who are waiting. Yes. And also the manner of asking. <laughs> Yes. The manner of asking, mm-hmm. yeah. If you are praying, yes, continue to pray, yes. and um, 
but don't just go and ask <laughs> or just <laughs> point <laughs> at <laughs> <laughs> what's wrong with you <laughs> yeah let us be very very sensitive this yeah. is a, a a sensitive topic it is. and uh, it's like when someone you, you don't know you don't know what the person is going through mm-hmm. maybe they are sick mm-hmm. or or it's just they are barren mm-hmm. and they can't tell you we yes. are barren yes. you know yeah. so the more you use you, you you spice the wound mm-hmm. it 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 draws them um it's it just pulls them out yes. from the community from mm-hmm. the society and everything yes. Mm. Yeah, so let us be builders of hope. Yes, and Amanda, to add on that, even to people who has who have children before, maybe they had no issues mm. of uh, you know children. Yeah, and then maybe they are hoping for a third born, and then you're there, you're asking them. Like I had a friend, uh, she had just had a miscarriage, and she had told me, but the group of friends did know. Mm. So you're there, she's coming from the pain of miscarriage, mm. and you're there. Where were third born and Nakujalini? You don't even know that maybe they have, they are going through something. Yeah. As you're saying mm. that, uh, uh, stop. Uh, okay, you can ask, you can pray, but uh, you know. Things happen. Yes, <laughs> but let's, uh, you, you just be sensitive. Mm. In, you, may, you don't know. Maybe this person, mm. maybe they Kuna. desired yeah. a fifth one, and maybe they lost the pregnancy. And because miscarriage sometimes doesn't seem like it's such a loss mm. it is a it loss, is a Amanda, loss. but is. people don't see like it's a loss mm. they don't even see as in in a pitanga too yeah. as in in a pitanga too but it's a loss so as you're saying sorry to cut you short no. that it's important to the sensitivity of the matter of pregnancy mm. and um miscarriage and all those things it's quite sensitive and you don't know who you're talking to you don't know what they are going Mm. through yeah 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 so guys it was really nice i hope you have been encouraged Mm -hmm. and you're going to encourage others please don't keep this video for yourself yeah (laughs) share share Mm. so many people are hurting there Mm -hmm. and some have lost hope but let's pray that uh, through this testimony, mm. you, you, it will revive your, your hope mm. and, and faith in the Lord. Amen. Yeah. Mm. So thank you so much for watching and uh, subscribing yes. and liking mm. and the comments. I, we have four. four. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so I will select who is going to get. Yes. Yeah. So thank you so much, Kate. Yeah. This was really uh, myself, I feel encouraged. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and uh, may God continue to bless your ministry. Amen. And may He draw many souls mm. to Him Amen. through you, through mm. your husband, mm. and the ministry that He has deposited in your life. Amen. Yeah, and thank you so much again. Really, I am so grateful. Amen. All right. So, guys, see you later. See you. Bye bye. <laughs> thank you. <laughs>